In this video, I'm going to talk about something called dagger component classes, component classes. After a brief introduction about what component classes are and what they're used for, I'm going to show you how to build an application level component class using the dagger Android dependencies. And this is something that you're going to be building in every single one of your projects. Pretty much, I, I honestly can't think of a situation when you wouldn't uh, build a dagger application level component class. It's kind of uh, almost a requirement for using dagger on Android. So we're going to start by taking a second look at the diagram that I have on the screen here. So remember the, the three components that we have here are the app component, which is this top level one, which stretches the entire application lifetime. We have the auth component, which takes up a portion of it. And then the, we have the main component, which takes up another portion of it. Um, the thing that I want you to notice here is that the app component stretches the entire lifetime of the application. So it starts and it will exist for as long as the activity, or sorry, as long as the application is alive. So from start to finish. Uh, the auth component has kind of uh, a shorter lifespan and same with the main component. The thing that I want you to notice about these two is that they're on the same level. So basically the way I want you to think of this is if auth component, then not main component. And if main component, then not auth component. So it's either one or the other. Only one will be active at any given time, these two components. App component is kind of like the, the parent, the top one up here, it's kind of like the parent and then these two are, they'd be known as sub-components. So auth component is a sub-component of the app component, and main component is a sub-component of app component. But also app, or sorry, auth component is on the same level as main component. That's how I, I want you to think of it, kind of like a tier system, like, like app component would be like tier one, and then auth component and main component would, would be like tier two. That's what, uh, that's how I would think of them, uh, kind of like subcomponents. They're technically called subcomponents. That's what the technical dagger terminology is. All right, so here we are back in Android Studio. I'm gonna delete this user class that I created, I believe it was in the last video. We don't need that anymore. That was just kind of for demonstration purposes. And now we're going to get started setting up Dagger, basically. So we have the dependencies just to kind of review. We've got the core Dagger, Dagger dependencies. We've got the Dagger Android dependencies. And now we're ready to start setting up Dagger. And the first step is going to be building an app, uh, a class that extends application. So an application level class. So I'm creating a new Java class and I'm gonna call this base application. And uh, normally when you create, create a, a class that is going to persist across the entire lifetime of the application, you would extend by application. That's what you would do. But because we're using Dagger, we are going to extend by a special class. Um, if you use the, the Dagger core dependencies, you would still be extending by application, but because we're using the Dagger Android dependencies, we're going to extend by Dagger application, and I'm going to get that dagger.android.support import. I want to get the Dagger support import because just like the support libraries on Android, it's compatible with more versions. So. Uh, basically, in this entire course, I'm going to be focusing on the not only the, the Dagger Android stuff, but the Dagger Android support stuff. So all of the imports I'm going to be using are going to be from the support versions. All right, so we have, uh, we have a warning up here. Uh, I'm going to click Alt-Enter on my keyboard, and it looks like I can implement a new method. So I'm going to click that and insert that method. Now, this is a, this is a method that's going to return... A, our app component when we're done building it. But we haven't built the class yet, so I'm just gonna return null for now. And there's another warning up here, and this is telling me that uh, I need to declare this base application class in the manifest. So I'm gonna go into the manifest and add a name attribute and reference that base application class. Now the project knows that I have a class that's going to uh, exist for the lifetime of the application, uh, and it's named base application. Okay, so now I'm ready to build the component. This is, uh, if you're confused, don't worry. This is kind of just the, the setup procedure that you need to start setting up Dagger, basically. So now I'm going to go into the main package directory. I'm going to create a new package, and I'm going to name it DI for Dagger. Actually, I think it's called <laughs> DI for dependency injection. I almost said Dagger injection, but it's uh, probably dependency injection. This is just kind of a... 
the typical package naming convention that people use when using Dagger. So now inside the DI package, I'm going to create another class. It's going to be an interface, and this is going to be named app component. So this is going to be that app component class that I've been talking about in the diagram. This is the one that's going to persist across the entire lifetime of the application. Now, when you're creating a component class with Dagger, the first thing you want to do is annotate it with at component. And that, that tells Dagger, that tells the code generator that I'm labeling this class as a component. This is going to be a component class. Uh, now, if, if we were using the old versions of Dagger, the core versions of Dagger, we, would, we wouldn't extend this by anything. Uh, we would just leave this as it is and we would carry on with the rest of the Dagger stuff. But because we are working with Dagger on Android particularly, uh, we are going to extend this uh, interface by another class. And uh, that's going to be Android Injector. And I'm going to specify a type of base application. So what this is doing is it's it's kind of taking uh, the code generation a step further. So if you were using the regular versions of Android, we would still have to, you know, create an inject method, inject it into our application. Uh, basically, there would, and that's there would be a bunch of more steps too. We'd have to implement some more interfaces and base application, a whole bunch of stuff we'd have to do. But if we extend by Android injector and specify a type of base application, we're basically telling Dagger that, hey, this app component is going to be, um, we're going to inject base application into this component and base application is going to be a client of the app component service. So think of this app component class as a service and our base application class as the client. So it's it's a, it's effectively setting up like a client service relationship. So that's kind of the that's the first step. Uh, now the second step is I'm going to over this is uh, this is what it would look like we're overriding the component builder method because this is uh, normally what you would do when you were instantiating the app component is you would use the builder pattern and build that object but we're going to override that and this is how you override it so I'm gonna go interface builder I'm overriding the, the builder uh, I'm going to first of all write app component and do build this is this is a mandatory step basically what you're doing is you're um, you're overriding the regular builder and it's returning a type of app component no matter what you will always have to do this just sort of memorize that step now the next step you don't always have to do I'm going to write annotate binds instance and I'm going to write builder and I'm going to write application and pass a application object so um, I'm sure you're confused. I'm going to explain that in just a second. The binds instance annotation is something you can use if you want to uh, bind a particular object or a particular instance of an object to the component at the time of its construction. And I'm sure that sounds uh, confusing to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I mean and then uh, it'll make sense. So if we go into base application, now we have our app component built. We have we don't have any kind of uh, special dependencies in here. We don't have any modules declared for those of you who know how to use Dagger a little bit. Uh, just a very bare bones app component that we can now construct. So now um, I want this app component to persist across the entire lifetime of the application. So it makes sense that I'm going to instantiate it inside of the base application. And that's what this extension of Dagger application and this this uh, application injector method is going to do. This is where I'm going to return my new app component. But before I can actually instantiate the app component and return it here, I need to rebuild the project because Dagger is going to build this app component. So I've, I've annotated it with the at component annotation. So now if I was to, uh, well actually I'll show you that it doesn't exist first of all. So if I write Dagger app component, notice that nothing comes up. But now if I was to uh, rebuild the project, so just go rebuild project. Now if I come into here and I write uh, dagger app, looks like it's not coming up. I must have forgot a step. So if I come in here, I did. Uh, so if you, if you use these, uh, I just remembered what I did wrong. So if you use these convenience classes like the Android injector and the dagger application, you actually need to include a module on the component which includes some additional code, basically some additional dependencies that you need to use these convenience classes. So I'm going inside the add component annotation and I'm writing modules and I'm specifying a 
a special uh, a special class that's used with a dagger android dagger support on android so i'm writing android support injection module dot class and you only have to ever declare this once as a module it only goes inside of your application level component which is in this case it's our app component and we declare that in there and now if i rebuild it it should generate the required code for me so as soon as this is done rebuilding now i'm going to come into here and write dagger app component and there we go we have our dagger app component that's been generated so this is the the dagger app component uh, version of this class right here i'm going to use the builder do dot application which is that binds instance that i was just talking about and then do dot build so this dot application is this method right here so i could change this to whatever it doesn't matter what the name of this method is uh, it just then I would just have to change that, but obviously it makes oops obviously it makes sense to call this application because we are binding an application instance to the application component. So if you take a look at the Dagger documentation uh, in the binding instances kind of section right here, it says often you have data available at the time you're building the component. Uh, for example, when you have an application that uses command line arguments, you might want to bind those arguments to your component. So you want to use the binds instance annotation if you have the uh, the object or a particular object at the time that you're constructing the component. And this doesn't happen all the time. Like you'll see in a lot of these components, uh, you won't have things available when you're constructing them. So it doesn't always make sense to use the binds instance annotation, but in this case it does because we want the app component to exist across the entire lifetime of the application. We are instantiating it inside the application class, so it makes sense to bind the application to that component. So now at this point, we would say that the application class, the base application class is a client and the app component is a server. It's a client-server interaction. Keep this idea of clients and servers as we move forward with the course. In general, the components will be the clients and the activities, the fragments, and whatever, whatever other classes will be the clients. Uh, of course, components can also be clients themselves. Uh, you know, like if there's a subcomponent and it has another subcomponent. In that case, the, the client would be the first I'm sorry, the server would be the first subcomponent and then the second one would be the, uh, the client. But uh, I don't want to get into that right now, but just kind of keep that in mind that anything technically could be a client, anything technically could be a server, but in general, it's going to be the components will be the servers and then they will have clients that will uh, be able to grab dependencies from them or inject dependencies into them. Now, of course, I know that this isn't making much sense to you right now. Like we built this component thing, but it doesn't really do anything. Uh, we have the base application class. Uh, I, I promise that it's going to make sense. It, this is just kind of a required setup procedure that you need to do. It, no matter what, if you're going to use Dagger on Android, you're going to be following this same exact procedure. You can copy paste this code exactly in every one of your projects. Uh, you will always need an app component. You will always need to put it inside your base application class. So just kind of memorize this is what I'm saying. Trust me, I know you're confused. You should be. I haven't shown you anything kind of real or concrete yet. Uh, Dagger has a steep learning curve. Stick with me and it will all come together when we start looking at examples. And uh, in, the, in the next video, I'm gonna work on injecting activities. So using basically an activity as a client and uh, using some other convenient annotations that Dagger Android has.